So what would you say are some of your natural gifts that you've discovered? My natural gifts are in my hands and my feet. Hi, Profile 2. I'm Karen McMullen, and welcome to this video about being the natural, or the hermit, or the genius, depending what you want to call it. Either way, the natural is tremendously gifted, and that's what we're going to focus on today. And in the next video, we're going to focus on the hermit aspect, and then in the last video, we're going to focus on the dynamic of being called out. So this video is for you if you have a two in your profile. You'll either be a two four, a two five, a five two, or a six two. And the reason I've divided this series into three is because I interviewed some amazing two profiles and asked them about their direct experience of being a two and got some incredible insight and stories. So I wanted to share that uh, footage with you but it was getting too long so I decided to put it into three videos it's gonna be awesome and if you do want like a short and sweet version I have also created that so you can check that out I'll post it there as soon as it's ready to stay notified when the next videos come up you can subscribe to the channel and also anything that I mention in the video all of the amazing people who contributed to this video are all in the description box below. So I definitely recommend you check that out because I have a lot of cool things going on that you can find down there. So in human design, the two is called the hermit, but it's also known as the natural or the genius. And in the gene key system, Richard, Richard Rudd calls the two the dancer. In the Bantu system, Steve Rhodes calls the two the discoverer. The bottom line is that the two is came into this world with natural gifts that are already intact, that have no logical explanation for why they are there, why they have so much talent at certain things that it just comes naturally to them that they don't even really need to try. I feel like my brain is in my hands because I don't always think something out Although I do sometimes, like sometimes I'm lying in bed and and I'm just staring off into space and my husband will say, I know you're working really hard right now because <laughs> I'm thinking about executing something and trying to I'm trying to figure out the mechanics in my mind. But once I put my hands on something, whether it's a piece of fabric or a piece of shearling, or a piece of fur, or something that's very tactile and tangible. Uh, when I hold the scissors in my hand, it's almost like my scissors are guided to tell me what to cut, you know? And then after I've cut it, then I make a pattern. So most people, they make the pattern and then they cut it. With me, I cut it and then I make the pattern. So it's kind of a little bit backwards, which means that very hard to explain to people what you're doing. <laughs> I guess one of the easiest things for me to do something that comes like the most naturally that I do get called out for that I do um, receive really lots of really good feedback for and that I don't have to try at all to do and that I kind of don't understand why other people can do it <laughs> which means I guess it's an innate talent right um, it's definitely making links between different concepts and different things that other people can't see I can see other people's potential I can, I have these like epiphanies, so that would be my 43, 23. Um, I can understand things on a deeper, deeper level that most people can. And for me, that comes very naturally. I am someone who will often be able to say exactly the right thing at exactly this, the, at exactly the right time. So that's how I experience my innate gifts, I guess. Um, but maybe I need to be called out for the others that I don't yet see myself. I'm intuitive. I can perceive, perceive the future and the past of people's lives, even though I shouldn't be able to do that without any props. Look, ma, no hands. Um, I am a, a decent writer. I seem to be a natural as a child, a, a gifted writer. Um, talents. I'm pretty good at speaking to a group of people um, in my adult years and getting uh, good results from motivating them. And I really think another one of my uh, gifts might be 
people do come to me for consultant, like they, like friends and stuff like that will ask for my guidance or my advice or my my guidance is the best way to put it because um, I'm not a therapist. So I'm not bad at giving guidance to people, you know, telling them kind of, you know, maybe what the next step should be or what my opinion or thoughts are about their next step. Uh, I tend to have a lot of people's ear in that regard, but I don't do therapy and I'm not good for emotional consoling i'm way more practical in my advice and you know giving giving people uh solutions not um <laughs> not giving people uh like oh i'm so sorry you feel that way i'm not the empath let's put it that way <laughs> it's just not me the the two can kind of doubt their gifts in some ways they don't necessarily doubt their gifts and i think you'll see this in the interview that some of the twos that i interviewed are quite confident and assured in their gifts but there can be a tendency because we live in this society where our, we're kind of taught that we should cultivate our abilities through education and through like certifications and becoming a professional and going to university for X years to develop our skills and that's when we become credible. So because of that mindset, it can be hard for the two to just accept that they have their gifts and they're already there and they didn't have to earn them. They didn't have to learn them. They didn't have to be certified. They just have them and that they are completely legitimate without that whole rigmarole of education involved. What happened was I wasn't an academic student. I just wasn't interested. I was too busy making an outfit to wear to the exam to study for the exam. So what happened was I um, I went to, I studied fashion design at a community college and I became a fashion designer. And I started my own company when I was 23 years old after spending a year in Europe and a, a couple of years in Toronto in the garment district. I started my own company because I couldn't get a job. And when I got back from Europe and um, that was Linda Lundstrom Limited and I ran that company for 35 years. Started in a two-bedroom apartment with a loan from my mom and dad and ended up being in a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility with 150 employees and stores all over North America carrying our product. We supplied boutiques in Canada and the U.S. and a, and a few in Europe. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> and now I... Uh, I sold that company in 2008, and now I am the designer for an online outerwear company called Thermacota, which I own with my two daughters. It was actually my daughter's idea to make glamorous, functional, romantic, warm outerwear that keeps you warm and dry and doesn't make you look like you're on an Arctic expedition. <laughs> Accepting that I had these gifts was really tapped in a bit back again with going to school. Like, so I stopped at getting an associate's degree. And like, the thing was, it was like, oh, okay, well, when are you gonna go get your bachelor's? When are you gonna go get your master's? And it's like, but I'm not really learning anything. It's like, what, like, what, am, I, like, what am I learning? What am I going back for? I found that I learned a lot more outside the classroom. So it was like people were saying, well, when are you going to do this? When are you going to do that? And I'm like, I, I don't really, I don't feel the need to do that. And the other thing that about that, about tapping into those gifts is really when I started professionally on different boards, you know, I felt when I first started it, that I had to work my way up that I couldn't start as I want to be the chair, I want to be the president, I want to be, you know, and when I was asked to do those things, it was like, okay, well, well, maybe I should be the secretary first, or maybe I should be the treasurer first, before I be the chair or the president. It was like, and people were like, no, you, you don't have to do that. You have the skills right now to be the chair, to be the leader, to be the president, whatever it was, you know, so, uh, again, tapping it, going back into that and realizing, no, this is, this is my path. This is, I can be the one, you know, making the path that everybody else follows. I don't necessarily have to be the follower. 
I had a lot of problems with our education system because the education system was not designed for people like me. Education was The education system was designed for people who could retain facts and information and then who could plan it and then do it. And I that's not the way I work. So consequently, I didn't do well in school. And my mom and dad didn't care, really, because they cared more about what I could do. And I'm, I'm very grateful for that because it ended up, you know, I ended up doing, do you think I've, might, I think I've made these hamburgers mixed enough? I think so. Okay, time to start something else. <laughs> do I struggle to take credit for my innate gifts since they didn't come through training? Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think I do. I think that my innate gifts, some of them are like, I, you know, this is crazy, but you know, I've been in astrology for 30 years, but I picked it up like I was breathing it. And then when I studied Hellenistic astrology, I, yeah, I started practicing Hellenistic astrology in, you know, the real world and building a fast client base. This is before I was actually, you know, finished my first year course. <laughs> because I felt to me like I knew what I was doing because it seemed so obvious and it seemed so familiar. It felt like I was remembering something. I have absolutely struggled to take credit for my gifts. Sometimes it feels like it's just not fair and that like I shouldn't be able to like benefit from them because I didn't try and I didn't work hard. And even from the time that I was really young, I've always just kind of been good at certain things or really just not good at things, but that's fine. Those aren't my gifts. And so a lot has always come easy to me. And it's something that I felt, you know, kind of wrong about throughout my life because it's like, well, other people have had to work hard. Shouldn't I have to work hard or shouldn't I have to, you know, earn these gifts? Like I can't just have them. So for me, there's always been an element of guilt, I think, associated with it. But again, understanding the line too, and that we are designed to have and to express these natural gifts. And that's just how it's designed to be for us has given me a lot of peace around that. And so the thing that comes naturally and easily to you is what you're meant to be doing and what you are good at expressing and, and go for it. Acknowledge it, see it, allow it, and do it, enjoy it. And it's totally possible that you might not be very good at explaining how you do what you do or even teaching other people. So sometimes uh, twos might not be a very good teacher. Um, it's not always the case, but they may not be able to explain how they did what they did since it just came naturally. Like people say to me, so what's your business plan? What's your marketing plan? I'm going, I'm just going to do it. And then I'll tell you what the plan was. Is that it? <laughs> like I do it. And then if I have to document what I did, then I'll, I'll document what I did. But I'm not going to document it and then do it. That just doesn't make any sense to me at all. I really love that Richard Rudd calls the to the dancer because like the line one, the line one is creative. The line two is also very creative, but it's in a new way. It's like their, their creativity is more just self-expression. Like a dancer who just has the movement inside and then it, it emerges and they are creating and they are being creative, but it's more just that they're self-expressing. And so that's the way that the two is creative is, is just by expressing what it, there is within them to be expressed. So I hope today's video inspires you to embrace the natural gifts that you have, to enjoy them, to express them, and allow others to enjoy them. It's really a beautiful thing. And uh, I think you can really see that in the interviews that we shared here. If you'd like to meet, I have a network called the grid network for light leaders as a facebook group if you would like to get my eyes and intuition on your human design chart i offer various readings on my website karenmcmullen.ca and you can also find that in the description box below so in our next video we're going to talk about alone time and the hermit aspect of the hermit. So I'll put the link here as soon as the video is ready and you can watch that video next. And then also make sure to subscribe to stay tuned for what I'm 
cooking up <laughs> next. I post new content every week. So until next time, take care.